AI in Action is brought to you by Aulus International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Our host, Bar Kelly, brings you the leading minds in AI, sharing their story, their success, and their advice. Focusing on fast-tracking you to the top, AI in Action cuts through the hype to help you kickstart your data science career. To listen to the latest AI in Action podcast, head over to www.aldus.com forward slash podcast, or subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Podcasts. Today's guest is Artil Tisabili. Artil is the CEO of Genesis AI, the decentralized blockchain-based marketplace for AI services. Artil gives us a little bit of a background today about himself, what got him interested in AI, some of the work that Genesis is doing, we'll talk about sentiment analysis, how we can improve people's product, and then later in the show we'll talk to a little bit more about the platform and some of the challenges it actually overcame to allow for a more decentralized economy to improve people's lives. You're listening to the AI in Action Boston series with Mark Kelly, my guest is Arco Civelli from Genesis AI. So let's get straight into today's episode. Welcome to the show, Arco. Uh, hi, Mark. Hi, everybody. Glad to be here. Thank you very much. Tell us a little bit about your background before we jump straight into Genesis AI. So I came to Boston for, for college. I did my bachelor's in economics at Harvard University. I was initially super interested in finance. I worked at the largest hedge fund in the world called Bridgewater Associates. Uh, but uh, afterwards, uh, something really, really important happened in my life that sparked my interest in artificial intelligence. So one of my closest friends uh, died in car crash, and he was uh, he was under the uh, drug influence. And uh, it also was a time I heard about how self-driving cars powered by AI can really minimize uh, fatality rates on the uh, on the road because uh, you know, like AI will not uh, drink and drive, AI will not smoke and drive. So that was sparked my interest about how much. Uh, AI can change, and I gradually started to talk to uh, professors of computer science about what AI is, and started taking courses, uh, and started artificial intelligence company afterwards, and since then I have been AI space, and I would love to be in the AI space for the benefit of uh, for the benefit of everybody. I believe that this is probably one of the most revolutionary technologies mankind has ever seen. Yeah, I can I could see why that you could get so passionate about it. So tell us a little bit about what Genesis AI does and tell us about some of the challenges that you need to overcome to do this. Uh, Mark, so basically Genesis AI is a marketplace for artificial intelligence, product services and algorithms. Uh, so basically we connect companies in need of AI services with organizations who like to monetize their AI technology. We want to build this global network of artificial intelligences uh, that uh, will do much more complex tasks together than they independently can do. For instance, uh, there's a medium-sized hotel that wants to do uh, a sentiment analysis around what its online community thinks about it. In order to do sentiment analysis, you need few things. For example, first you need to translate uh, different reviews in different languages into English. So you need translation AI. Second, you need to, for example, uh, recognize the speech. Uh, maybe there is a YouTube uh, video that describes uh, one of the client's experience about, uh, about the hotel. You need to recognize it. So second. Third, you need to summarize the text that is on the booking.com, TripAdvisor, and so on. If you are a startup, it's very hard to have all these capabilities. So what we do is we provide a protocol, basically a constitution, which in reality is a bunch of smart constructs for how these different AIs, in this case, translation AI, text summarization, and speech recognition, can collaborate and connect to each other to produce sentiment analysis. That's fantastic. And so sentiment analysis, really for a listener who's a, maybe a novice on this, you're, you're taking into consideration all the different thoughts about what a product might go to market, so good, bad, or indifferent, because most people might necessarily tell the company, but they might put on Twitter to say, hey, it sucks, it takes too long to load, am I out of here, or that was really bad customer service. Uh, you so for example, or this is really good. My kids really enjoyed the experience, which 
you want to really suck all that up and, and either if it's really positive, get it back out there to the marketplace because it's mm-hmm. real and true. And if it's really negative, well, you want to take that constructive feedback on ASAP so you can improve your product and, and really take that feedback on. Uh, what's really helpful is if you've got a customer service agent who has taken that sentiment analysis at real time, that when he's then speaking to that customer, it's a fantastic opportunity to have empathy, listen, and potentially once you solve the problem, uh, upsell. And it just it can work in so many different ways. So it's a really, really important thing to add context. For sure, it's uh, super, super clear. Uh, it's uh, right now one of the uh, sentiment analysis definitely can be used in many ways. Starting from hedge fund using it to analyze sentiment around Facebook stock, for instance, to uh, uh, people getting idea about uh, uh, what people think about them. You can even do it your sentiment analysis around yourself, which actually would be funny uh, experiment to do. Do you know what I would? I wouldn't want to look at what I was doing maybe three or four years ago. The, the, <laughs> the dread. Now that I've got kids, I'm a different man. But yeah, it's, 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 a, it's funny things. So, so tell me about some of the challenges that you and the team face at Genesis and, and some of the things that you need to do to overcome them. It's a, it's a great question. So a biggest challenge that we face currently is cost of uh, uh, computation that AI needs. Uh, basically, AI, AI takes lots of uh, cost of uh, AI computation is super high right now. Major reason is because uh, uh, you need to, in some cases, analyze millions of data points, uh, and that takes lots of power, right? And that power is very costly. So idea is how to uh, uh, create uh, Sort of ecosystem where this cost is minimized. If you want to minimize, if you do not minimize the cost, then most of the players, medium sized and small companies, probably won't be able to use uh, these AI services, which is opposite of what we want. We want small and medium sized companies to get benefits of AI. What we see right now is uh, only big companies use AI and only big companies provide AI. So they get, basically there are a few oligopolis in the space, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, only few companies are owning all the AI. They are hiring all the AI engineers, acquiring all the good AI startups, and all the benefits of AI are accumulating to them. And we want to provide this approach where everybody can benefit from AI, both as a seller and as a buyer as well. Okay, so tell us maybe some examples about some of the benefits that you brought to their business from, from working with them. For example, let's go back to this uh, hedge fund example. Uh, let's say that uh, uh, you are working at the hedge fund and uh, you are analyzing uh, stock. You know, one key thing uh, when you analyze stock is to know what uh, what are expectations? Because price of the stock is what's reality versus what people expect. Uh, you can go and read, let's say, Morgan Stanley's research report, analyst reports to see what analysts expect, but it's also super important to know what public expects. In order to understand that, you can manually go through, let's say, Twitter and Seeking Alpha and all the other channels to see uh, what are people's expectations about, let's say, Facebook stock, but that will take a lot of hours, and you don't have that many hours. You are all, people in hedge fund are already working in hours, so they don't want to spend uh, many hours and going through the Twitter account. So what you do, you come on our website, you search, uh, for example, sentiment analysis, one of the expertise that we have right now, and you find a company that is offering uh, uh, easy way for them to do sentiment analysis around the keywords that you send them. They will tell you, uh, first they will tell you snapshot of the analysis, good, bad, uh, how good or how bad, and then you can see the details of how it has been changing, what are common awards associated with it, and even make potential predictions about how the sentiment will change. This is super helpful when it comes to saving costs. This is fantastic. So you really want to have that emergence of the decentralization of AI economy to really improve kind of people's lives. And you've been really kind of clear about the painter, the picture that you're looking to paint uh, for, for listeners. So this is, is this how you kind of see the future looking? It's uh, basically uh, what we want to do is 
so basically, before I go there, big problem right now is uh, this AI oligopolies uh, put prices that are terrible for people. For example, if I'm only one who is selling the water and everybody wants water, I can put the price that is 10 times larger than uh, what's, my, what's my cost. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, what's, uh, so that's what's happening in AI. AI costs right now, or better way to say that the cost of services, uh, which uses some sort of machine learning, is much higher right now than it's, uh, uh, it makes logical sense for it to be. And it's because there are oligopolies. We want to reduce cost, which will result in AI being affordable for everybody through decentralizing. What does decentralization mean? Decentralization means that there will be this idea of for the people and by the people. For example, AI sellers will be mostly individuals, small and medium-sized components, anyway large components, but lots of them. That's one, and the buyers also will be everybody starting from individuals to large companies. And there will be no central authority who will take all the profits, who will say, you can come on our marketplace, you cannot come on our marketplace. As we want to create a sort of constitution, full democracy uh, that's driven by the people that uh, will self-regulate itself and through this constitution, they will uh, create environment where only the best AI products can can survive, and only uh, only people who have uh, benevolent uh, aspirations can be on the marketplace. Okay. Uh, so, so Arco, sure. where where do you see the future of machine learning AI, especially when you've got a marketplace for AI and products and services with Genesis AI? Uh, it's an interesting question. So basically, there are a few uh, trends right now. First is uh, uh, people in, people are getting much more educated about what AI is and uh, how it actually can help. Big problem we find uh, through talking to companies is everybody wants AI, but people have no idea how it actually can be applied to solve their problems. Yes. Uh, and uh, gradually, there is a huge education boost. Uh, lots of companies right now are very aware of uh, how exactly which of their problems can be solved by machine learning. Uh, so that's one of the trends, increasing education. Uh, second, uh, there's a trend towards decentralization as well. It's main, there are a few reasons. Uh, for that first is people got really upset when they uh, learned that their data was resolved uh, or when there's their data leaked. And uh, this centralized parties that they trusted, in reality, was not as trustworthy as they expected. So right now, people really want to own their own data or if, the, if it's sold, they want them to be a party who will say, I want to be sold or I don't want it to be sold. They want to be in the, uh, uh, these sort of decision makers of what happens around their data. And decentralization is definitely uh, one of the solutions to this uh, uh, centralized party leaking your data. A third big um, trend right now is uh, cost of computation is still going down. It's still very high, but it's going down substantially, which will be one of the big push to uh, taking AI to the next level. But fourth and most important uh, is uh, what we are focusing on right now, creating a protocol to connect different AIs to each other. So just imagine if uh, I connected all the AIs in the world, tens of thousands of them, uh, all the expert AIs that can do sentiment analysis, that can do speech recognition, X, everything basically. That would be the best foundation for artificial general intelligence, which potentially will be the single most valuable technology that the mankind has ever seen. So difference between a, a big problem with AI right now is AIs can only do very narrow things. Uh, for example, the one AI can play uh, poker, but it cannot play chess. Uh, in most cases, the AI is very, very narrow. But if you start connecting them, 
to start to act like human brain where you have part of the brain that can flex your muscles, that can drink water, and so on. Uh, so uh, AI, uh, connected AI is the biggest, uh, uh, I would believe, the best foundation for creating artificial general intelligence. Yeah, it, it, it's a really, really good point because when, you, when people are interacting with, with narrow AI, they can expect uh, an AGI uh, result and then they get frustrated with it because there's no context. You ask it a question and then it's like, I don't understand because it doesn't understand the previous question because it's like a goldfish, it's just forgotten it, right? So it's, it's, it's very, very specific. So bringing them all together and merging it, it's fantastic. One of the challenges you have that is the integration. It's like lions and lambs bringing them together. They're completely different systems. And sometimes those systems purposely don't work together because they don't. Those, those providers don't want them to work together. Amazon, Google, Amazon Alexa doesn't want to tell you what's going on in Google because they don't like the they don't like the systems, right? So, 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 it's, so it's a cha- it's a challenge. Yeah, it's de- it definitely is. So we've been speaking with Arkel Shishwili. He's the CEO of Genesis AI, and that was our last question today. Arkel, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Mark. Great conversation. Thank you. AI in Action is brought to you by Aldus International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Aldus offer an exec search program. Aldus can help you discover how data science and AI can transform your company. With our unrivaled network of C-suite executives and senior AI professionals, we offer retained search services across the US and Europe. For more information, contact mark at aldus.com. Get the Aldus advantage. Become a member of the Aldus community and enjoy some of the following. AI meetups. Once a month, our community gathers to listen to some of the leading experts in the world of data science and AI. Our speakers come from all over the world, including Dublin, Boston, and Frankfurt. We also have our AI mentors. Our experts will provide mentoring to Aldus members. And don't forget our AI in Action podcast. Each week, we have guests from all over the world talking us through their education, career, and more. Become an Aldus member and get the Aldus advantage. For more information and to sign up for our newsletter, log on to www.aldus.com. That's www.aldus.com. Aldus International, empowering through AI.